Hello everyone, I'd like to show you how to build uh, this Plexus setup here in Cinema with CNotes. Um, Plexus is uh, well known, it's an After Effects plugin and it builds this kind of uh, pattern. Um, it connects uh, dots with lines uh, depending on their distance. Um, you can do this in Cinema also with X particles and with an uh, old plugin called Übertracer. Um, but now I like to show you how to build this uh, in Cinema with Nodes. Um, first off, uh, the node system is still in development, so maybe in newer versions of Cinema something will break. Um, yeah, but. Uh, for this version, it works pretty fine. Okay, let's start. Here is the final result. I have here two examples. One is with a loop and the other one is without a loop. I will explain this one with a loop and at the end I show the difference between the setup. You can see it here without a loop. Okay, let's start with some explanations. Um, here we have a matrix object with 10 points and with the index from 0 to 9. And what we have to do is run over every point and check the distance between the other points and check if the distance is, for example, less than 10 centimeters. So, uh, and if this is true, we build an array out of the positions. So, for example, we start with 0 check to point one, say, okay, this is less. So we are filling an array with the positions from zero to one. And then we check the other points. Then we go maybe to six and to nine and see, okay, this is less than 10 centimeters. We go then build from zero to six and from zero to nine uh, and so on. And this will be our final array with the positions uh, to build the spline. Let's start with the node setup. Um, we don't want to do it here in the scene nodes context. We want to build our own object. So we need a capsule object. So we go here to the asset browser, then nodes. And under asset construction, let me display this as list. We have the spline primitive group. This is a spline capsule. In this one, you can build a spline geometry. So drag it in and it opens directly. Um, the first we have to do is to import our matrix object. And you see here, we have a lot of outputs. Um, the only output that we need is the point array. When we click on it, we see here the, it's a point array, an array with vectors in it. Uh, these are the position vectors of those points. Next, we need our loop. So this is under flow control. There is a node called loop carried value. Drag this in and delete the initial input. So, and what we need here is we have to feed uh, every point into this loop. So, uh, we first have to extract every point position out of the array. You can do this uh, with a node called iterate collection. We connect it to the collection and can see here we feed in an array with vectors and the output is every vector uh, that means every position and we connect this to the, our loop uh, the new input so that means that every point has its own loop and what we need next is the whole array and also the index. So now every point, maybe point zero, has its own loop and now we have to decide how much it loops. So we can build this with a node called 
range. Here we decide how big the range is. So it's um, the same size as our array. So we can get here the count and port it in here. And the range goes into the inner scope. So that means on point zero, for example, it runs 10, 10 times. Next, uh, let's jump into the loop. So now we have to calculate the distance between the points. There is a distance node. Distance, so it needs two vectors. Uh, so we port in the first vector that's actually here for our loop from point zero. That's the position of point zero. And now we need to extract every point out of our array. So there's a node called get element. And here we feed in our array. And with the inner scope that we defined, uh, we put this in in the index. So the loop runs 10 times and spits out all the positions of our array. And we connect this here, and now we have all the distances between the points. And next, we have to check if the distance is uh, greater or less than our defined values. So first, we need uh, our values. We do this with a constant node here. We can put in some values. So uh, you say okay this is the max and this is the minimum value so for example here 20 centimeters and here we leave it at zero so now we have to compare these distances with the re result and check if it is true or not so we can do this with a compare note And here you see the operation. Um, now we feed in the distance and our maximum value and ask, okay, is the distance greater? No, we want it the other way. Is it less uh, than our maximum distance? So the result will be one. If not, it will be a zero. The same with our minimum distance. But here we have to change it to greater than. So the distance has to be greater than the minimum value. And the last uh, compare that we have to build is um, we don't want to check the point zero with itself. So we feed in. Uh, we have first here to switch from flow to integers. So we feed in the index of our point and of course um, the inner scope value so here and then we say if it is not equal so if it is zero is not zero we have here also an output um, with the number one now if all of those three outputs are true so the value of one we want to fill an array with our two vectors so we can use a boolean operation here and feed those two outputs in here. And if those are the same, it spits out also a one and do the same with these two nodes. So if all of those three are true, then our final output here is also true. If one isn't, we have here a zero. Next, we have to collect our two position vectors and fill them in a final array um, if this is true. So first we have to collect those. We use a build node for this. So, uh, and here the data type will be vectors. Um, remove 
two elements and now we feed in the first position vector and the second one and now we need our final array it's like this array here and its type is also vector remove all of those and now we need a, an append node um, this is for appending our uh, two vectors into our final array so connect this here and then feed those two vectors into here and you see it uh, generates an iterate collection so that means uh, it takes those two vectors and appends it into our new array at the moment it feels every connection into it so we uh, like to <coughs> decide when this happens and when not so we can um, use this uh, our result here and feed this into our count so that means if uh, count is one it feeds those two vectors in if it's zero uh, nothing will be appended so and uh, for the last step we propagate the, our final array outside of the loop and that's it for the loop part let's jump outside of the loop and now we have our final array here and we like to build our final spline so um, there is a node uh, called assembling spline and you can see it needs positions these are also an array with vectors that so that's perfect so we can feed this in here and the final geometry goes to here and at the moment we see nothing that's because the distance i uh, think is too low so we jump back into the loop and go to the maximum distance maybe 50 Ah, first line appears, it's maybe 100, and you see, okay, the connections are correct, but uh, we have two problems. First, there are Bezier splines, and second, um, there are some um, connections that are too long. That's because uh, it connects here every every element that we appended to our array but we don't want this connection here just want over this and this so let's jump back first to the assembling spline say linear and the next step is to decide the segments of our final spline i like to explain how the segments work so if this is our spline and we have I think, six points one two three four five six so um, we want to uh, always delete this segment here so uh, our final spline has to look like this this has to be our fine spline. So uh, the segment here is actually an array. Um, there we can um, decide uh, this look. So it works like this. So if you have again an array and we say, okay, first segment has two points and second segment has also two points and the third segment has also two points. So all this accumulated has to be the same as all the points so two four six so six points that's perfect you also can do something like another color maybe if we make three and three that's together it's six so it will look like this okay let's build this First, we need our count of our final array. So, get count. 
then we divide divide it by two. And now let's um, build an array, but now we build uh, this array um, with the fill array node. So you will see how this works. So the fill value uh, will be integers. So, and uh, it, we need the number two like this. And now we need the length. So, and the length is the result uh, of our calculation here. Feed this in, length. So now we have an array, uh, the half the size of our final array. Now we can feed this into segments. And you see, let's hide the doodle. Here we have the connections that we need. Yeah, and that's it. The last step is to build some parameters uh, for our object. So the first thing we need is uh, our actually our matrix object we want to feed in. Just click here and connect it to the input, propagate the port, and you will see here in input we have an object link for the matrix. And the other two parameters are our minimum and maximum value. So dive into the loop. Connect this here and this one here. Okay. And same procedure. And now we can rename them. So right click, go to edit port or edit resources. When you go to edit resources, you see all the ports. So here, this is you scroll down here and here is the name. So this is max distance. And this one is the minimum distance. All right. And now we can play with it so we can First, make more clones, maybe 600. Oh, that's a bit too much. Maybe one hundred. start with 100. And you see it don't update. So uh, the problem here is that we need to also that animation works. We need to go to the matrix object and check time dependent. And uh, now it works. So then go back to our capsule object maybe let's make here 30 uh, or 50 maybe hide this and with the minimum distance you can kill like the, the small connections yeah that's it for this setup so for the last part I like to explain how it works without a loop so we are here at the starting file um, here is the setup without the loop. Um, this part is the same. So here is again the sampling of the spline, the creation of our segment array. And here we are building our final array. And here is the comparison of the distance. So those uh, nodes these are the same that in our loop. And here this area, this is the new part. Here we built the iterations for our two get element nodes to decide which um, element of the array we need. So I will show you the results here um, for a better understanding. Um, we have 10 clones and then we go to the data inspector and we see, okay, we have from zero to 99, we have 100 iterations uh, with the values 10 times zero, 10 times one and so on. And in the other one, we have always uh, um, a row from 0 to nine and then it repeats. 
So, and if we compare those two results, uh, we have the same, like in the same result, like in our loop. Um, to build this, just um, get the count of our point array, then multiply it uh, with uh, itself. Then make a range from zero to the end is 100. So we have a range from zero to 99. And then we uh, divide it by the count. So uh, because we have data type integer, it rounds the value. So that's why we have those 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And the other iteration we build with a modulo. Here also we feed in the range and the count and uh, the modulo generates the result that we saw here. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this was helpful and gives a bit of a better understanding of C nodes. Um, maybe there are other solutions if someone have a tip or if you have any questions, write it through the comments. So yeah. Bye-bye.